Hey, it's Rick with LearnDigitalAdvertising.com and today's tutorial is on Google Analytics segments. So I think that Google Analytics segments are probably the most underutilized feature in Google Analytics, but also one of the most valuable. So I want to go into depth on the different types of segments, what they are, how they're used, give some tips, and um, we'll go from there. So first of all, we all know that Google Analytics is just loaded with useful reports. Um, so we've got things like the channel report that tells us you know, different channels that are driving traffic and how much traffic and some of the behavioral uh, consequences of that. We have behavior uh, you know, reports that get into you know, which pages are landed on the most and which ones are viewed the most and bounced the most. So we have all these really useful reports. Out of the gate though, the segment for every one of these reports is all users, right? So that's actually a segment and that includes everybody who comes to the website. The thing is, and what a lot of people overlook is you can actually add other segments. So for example, if I didn't want to look at all users, I just wanted to look at a subset of users, perhaps those from the state of Florida. I could instead remove all users and then just look at Florida users. And what that would basically do then is enable all of these reports to do their job, but only looking at that traffic from users in Florida. Another example might be I might want to look at people who just come through mobile devices or something and, and take a look at that segment or even compare two segments. So I could say, take that mobile traffic and desktop traffic and compare any report in Google Analytics and see how those two audiences behave differently. Um, so that's really what, you know, at the high level, what segments do. There's three reasons to use segments. The first is analysis, right? You can, we just spoke about that. You can sort of compare different segments and try to identify if there are areas for optimization or really just understand behavior better. You can also take segments and send them to Google Ads. So um, instead of just, say for your retargeting campaigns, instead of just retargeting all visitors, you could break it down into maybe five different segments of visitors. And one would be visitors who've converted and maybe another one visitors who have not converted. Visitors who have spent more than $100, visitors who you know, have spent more than $1,000, you know, visitors from mobile devices or visitors from certain states or repeat visitors. So there's so many different ways. If you just create segments, you can then pass that to Google Ads. And that's a really important piece of this when you're optimizing Google Ad campaigns. Now, the third is also with Google Data Studio and at LearnDigitalAdvertising.com, we love Google Data Studio. And we can also take these same segments and share them with Data Studio. So if we're doing different reports there, we can actually import these segments into Data Studio and look at those subsets. So there's really three uh, you know, main reasons that we use them. Uh, so let's get into how they work. First off, as I mentioned, when you're looking at most reports within Google Analytics, on top you'll see the segment that you're reviewing. And at this point, most of you are probably just looking at all users, which is great. But let's change that. Let's do a different segment. And I'll just do one uh, quickly here. I'm going to see if I can grab one that is mobile traffic. So Google has this nice pre-built segment for me called mobile traffic. Now, if I were to leave all users up here, and mobile traffic up here. Let's take a look at what it does to the report below. Now when we look at the organic, we're in the channel report within Google Analytics. Now when we look at the organic search metrics, we actually can compare the two line by line, right? All users, this is the amount of traffic or the number of users, the number of sessions, we can compare all those. We could look at, you know, conversions, let's just, uh, actually that's fine. We'll look at conversions and conversion rates, um, you know, that sort of thing. So. We can take these two and really compare them. A more useful comparison in this example might be to, instead of comparing mobile traffic to all users, is to take mobile traffic and let's see if we can compare it quickly to desktop traffic. And this is really important for a lot of sites is to understand that mobile experience. And I'm just gonna expand my date range a little bit here while we do this. Um, and now I'm gonna take a look. Let's look at this organic search again. What I know already is that I get a lot more desktop traffic than mobile traffic from organic search, right? At the same time, I get a lot more conversions. I can see my conversion rates, you know, those sort of thing. If I were an e-commerce store, this would probably, especially a busy e-commerce store, you know, and this is fairly small data we're looking at now, but I could look at things like the conversion rates and revenue and revenue per visit and all that kind of thing stuff. So. That's just a really basic comparison and, and the general idea and the takeaway that you want to you know, really think about is you can take multiple segments and stack them here and we could even add a third if we wanted to and compare uh, in this case, maybe we'll just add tablet traffic. All right. So if I'm someone who's uh, sort of charged with uh, 
with analyzing the, you know, different major categories of devices, you know, I could really quickly say, okay, you know, here's my breakdown of different types of traffic here on the whole is how everything performs compared to one another. So really great comparison tool um, to begin with. Now let's go ahead and we're going to remove some of these segments. And we're going to talk about the different types of segments quickly. So I'm going to actually go into add a segment. So within Google Analytics, um, you have a screen that shows all of your segments, but you can sort of filter these a little bit on the left column here and first grab the system segments. So system segments are basically just the pre-canned segments from Google Analytics. So you're going to see things like all users, obviously, that's the default, converters, bounced sessions, made a purchase, mobile and tablet traffic. So you can go ahead and hop into your account and, and go through these, but Google's created about 20 segments for you that they think is important that you, 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 um, that you basically could just grab out of the box. Now, the really cool thing about this though, and, and the truth is that depending on your website and depending on your goals, these probably aren't gonna be enough. And that's where custom segments come in. So when I filter over to custom segments, these are basically all of the segments that I've created. And these are at the user level. So if you log in as you know Joe at example.com to Google Analytics, you get to take these segments between every site that you can manage. So the cool thing is, especially if you're managing multiple clients or websites, you can actually create a segment and it comes with you and it makes it really efficient for you to you know, parse information if you have a very specific way to look at things. So these custom segments are all ones that I've created and each one of these has a, a whole sort of configuration section which we're going to go through right now and how to build your segment. So when those system segments aren't enough and maybe, you, maybe you're an e-commerce site and you sell shoes and you want to just look at everybody who bought a, you know, basketball shoes for example, you know, that's what we use custom segments for. You really want to just narrow into like very specific groups of people. Some other good examples might be, let's just say you're running a very specific campaign that's very important to you for some reason. You may want to create a segment and say, I only want to look at the traffic that came in from that campaign. What that lets you do then is go again through all of those different Google Analytics reports, the behavior reports, the conversion reports, and really just, just zone in on sort of that type of traffic. So. Let's look at how the custom segments are created because this is really the most useful tool here. What I'm gonna go ahead and do is just click add a new segment. And I'm gonna give my segment a name. So in this particular example, um, and this is our Learn Digital Advertising website sort of test account. What I might wanna do is say, I wanna see all traffic that has viewed an, uh, maybe a page that has the word data studio in it, right? I wanna look at that specific segment because these are all my users who are interested in Google Data Studio. So I'm just gonna say Data Studio Viewers. Now, you get sort of a, a guide of sorts that's going to try to steer you into how to create your segments. So you're gonna have things like demographics. Um, this, a lot of these aren't relevant to what we're doing right now, but I kinda of wanna go through these quickly. And this would be where, well, I wanna look at you know, certain age groups or certain genders, uh, affinity categories, in-market segments, that kind of stuff. I could toggle over to technology and maybe just look at people who are using Chrome or you know, other stuff. So really important that you go in and kind of click around and see the different things you can kind of filter. You can look at behavioral thing and, and just kind of identify users who have maybe um, had more than a certain number of sessions or have had a session in the last week, uh, that kind of thing. Aside from all of these, and this goes on by the way, you know, there's a lot of just sort of, this is sort of the pre-guided uh, kind of approach. Down below though, you have advanced and you can do conditions. So conditions are basically very specific. I wanna make sure that people have seen a certain page, you know, that's uh, either got this in the title or this in the title, or people who are from Florida or are from New York. So it lets you get a little bit more granular. So in my, um, in my uh, situation here, I'm gonna do a condition and I'm just gonna say the page maybe title, right? That's gonna hook into the page title tag, contains data studio, right? And I'm just gonna click out of that box, wait a second, and what you're gonna see here on the right side is a summary of how many users, so what percentage of my all visitors have seen a page title that contains data studio, right? 26.96%. How many users is that and how many sessions is that? So this is like your little preview tool. And this kind of, to me, it kind of helps me figure out whether I set the segment up correctly to begin with. If it, you know, if it's got about the number or percentage of 
of you know traffic that I expected. Um, but it lets you sort of preview that audience size because in some cases, especially if you're going to send this to Google Ads or something, you may say, hey, that audience is just isn't going to be big enough. I may need to you know expand this a little bit. But so for the sake of my um, you know demo here, um, let's just go ahead and create this. Right, the Data Studio viewers. Uh, and I'm just making sure that I want to track all sessions. Now, there's two ways to look at this. You can either have this filter show me all sessions where Data Studio viewers, uh, where basically Data Studio, um, you know, page was viewed, or all users. And the, the difference is, you know, is, is can be pretty dramatic between the two of these. So at the session level, we're like, I just want to analyze the data from the sessions where they actually looked at those pages. But I may more so, especially if I'm passing this to Google Ads, want to look at users because maybe the user didn't in one session um, view a page called Data Studio, but maybe you know they did previously. So I could switch that to users, um, and that's just going to you know set this filter a little bit differently because my goal is to target people who are interested in Data Studio. So let's go ahead and save that. And you'll notice up top, my tablet traffic is still up here. So I'm just going to remove that because what I want to do right now is zero in on people who are looking at Data Studio related content. So let's just go through some reports and talk about them, right? So we, we can first look at the channel report and say, well, how do people who are looking at Data Studio pages get to our site? Well, organic search is really, you know, the main driver of that. Uh, but, you know, with other types of stuff, there may be content that your ads are or social media or, you know, that sort of thing. Um, what I might also want to do is then say, well, what pages are they actually viewing? So let's go ahead and go to the all pages report. And now you can see what you're going to notice with all these pages is that the URL of them is usually and probably almost always going to contain the word Data Studio in it, right? So I could then identify for those users who have been to the site and looked at Data Studio related content, you know, what is the content that they're looking at the most? So now I know what's most popular. and. Uh, and that sort of thing. So this goes on and on and on. So every single report that you would typically look at, you can drill into sort of that higher level detail of this particular group. Now let's take it to the next level. That's sort of the analysis level. Let's jump over and say, well, what if I want to send this to Google Ads, right? So I can take now these Data Studio viewers and what I might want to do is run a display campaign to them promoting some Data Studio related product, for example. So what I would have to do then is find a way to send that to Google Ads, that audience, so we could run that campaign. So I'll quickly just go to the um, admin of Google Analytics. And what we want to do is go down to something called audience definitions here and audiences. So here's where we take that segment and we convert it to an audience and we send that audience then to Google Ads. Um, something you'll notice when you get in here, if you have connected Google Ads to your Google Analytics account before, you're going to always see all users here because by default that's going to get sent over. We're going to create a new audience in this case. And we have two choices. One is to create a new or one is to import. And because we're going to bring a segment in, we're going to import. I'm just going to search for it up here, my Data Studio viewers, really easy. Um, and then the membership duration, uh, I'm going to decide, well, how far back do I want to go? Do I want to send Google ads, you know, people who have seen Data Studio content in the past 30 days, maybe 60 days, maybe 90 days. Since I'm selling software, I may go back a little bit further to increase the size of that audience. And I'll just give it a name real quick so that when it gets over to Google Ads, I'll recognize it. And this is going to be Data Studio Viewers. And then it's just going to ask me where to send it. And I'm basically just going to tell it to send it to my Google Ads account, which is fine. And then hit publish. That's all there is to it. Um, wanted to run through that. But basically what we just did is we created a segment within Google Analytics. We then sent that segment over to Google Ads. And now, and it would be another tutorial to go to, you know, how to set up your, you know, your campaign and whether you want to, you know, do a standard like display campaign to those users, or maybe you want to have a retargeting list for search where you bid higher on people who maybe are searching for certain things, but have also looked at your data studio content. So all different ways to mix and match that once you get into Google Ads. Um, but I think really the key takeaway and really what you want to focus on here is Look at your business. Think about all the different behaviors and interests that users you know, may have that might help indicate 
um, you know, ways to promote better. So it, like I said, with the data studio viewers, or if you're an e-commerce site and they lo they've looked at a certain category of product, for example, create all those custom segments. It doesn't hurt to do that. And you start gathering data. In addition to that, you pass that to Google ads, Google data studio, etc. Now you have the opportunity to really bid a little bit differently, run ads a little bit differently and analyze that data a little differently based on that behavior, right? But the core, what it all starts with is this simple tool that lets you build those segments. That's about it. I just want to wrap up with just some of the most common segments that we see that you really might want to consider. Focusing on e-commerce first. You want to know who abandoned cart. You want to know who bought. Specifically then if you're a larger site because you need a large, you know, because you ideally you want a big audience, you want to think about things like, do I have an audience who bought a certain type of product, a certain category of product, spent a certain amount of money? You know, you really want to find those, those golden nuggets. Who are your favorite customers? And when you do that, you can then sort of reverse engineer things and say, okay, the people who did this, where did they come from? Where did they land on? Um, you know, what type of content did they read? If there's videos on your site, what videos did they watch? There's, there's all sorts of ways to sort of use that audience and analyze that behavior to then either make changes on your website or send it over to Google ads and bid heavily on those people. Maybe people who've spent over a thousand dollars, you know, you may want to double bids on those in Google ads because you can do that or just show display ads to those people because standard display ads and Google's don't, don't, doesn't really work. And maybe your retargeting campaign is struggling a little bit, but if you really retarget people who've spent over a thousand dollars, all of a sudden it may work really well. You know, so there's all different angles from an e-commerce standpoint. In the non-e-commerce space, it's really just specific to what, you know, the site is. If it's a brochure site and they've downloaded a certain PDF, you may want to, you know, advertise to those people differently. Or if it's just a content site and they've read three or four articles, you know, which is maybe twice as high as your average user, maybe you want to run some ads to those people because they seem more engaged with the type of content you have. There's all sorts of ideas to parse this, but, you know, really just focus on the business and sort of the way you want people to interact analyze those people, but at the same time, and as importantly, send it over to your ad networks as audiences and leverage it there. So hope this helps as like a primer to segmentation. Uh, obviously on YouTube, comment below with questions. We're happy to answer them. If you love or hate the video, let us know. And uh, as always, learndigitaladvertising.com. Uh, you know, join us. Thank you.